Hi, my name is Jan van Skolkwijk. I'm from Professional CPD. The video that we're going to record today deals with the criteria for technologists. Now, the engineers are fine. Um, it's in the application documentation. Everybody knows where to find it. However, when it comes to the technologies, it's not such a simple story. There are specific documents that talk to the criteria, but it's not obvious to find, unless you know where to look for it. So I have made it easy. You can pop an email through to me. Um, it's johan at 6cds.co.za, and I'll send you the document. I'll also upload what I can on LinkedIn, but um, here's the video. You will find this document as Annex A to the Discipline Specific Guidelines. So that's where you'll find it, but I've summarized it and it's now available to you, so I can send it on, no problem. So let's have a look at it quickly. There are 11 um, outcomes, as you know by now, and each one of these outcomes will have one, two, or three different criteria. And you will find the box where to put the specific criteria in on form B2.1 TERs, which is your training and experience report. If you look on the right hand column, you'll find referred to the engineering report outcomes. Then underneath that, you will have an outcome and you'll have a criteria. So your outcome, for example, would be outcome number one, but your criteria might be either A, B, or C, or one, two, or three. Um, and that is what you need to document there. So let's look at the various ones that need to be completed on your training and experience report. For outcome number one, which is define, investigate and analyze engineering problems, the criteria for outcome number one will be one, performed or contributed in defining engineering problems leading to an agreed de definition of the problem to be solved. Number two, performed or contributed in investigating engineering problems, including the collecting, the organizing, and evaluating the information. Number three, performed or contributed in analysis of engineering problems using conceptualization, justified assumptions, limitations, and evaluation of the results. So outcome number one, you will find three criteria there. Outcome number two, design or develop solutions for these broadly defined engineering problems. The question posed here for the criteria, has the applicant designed or developed solutions to broadly defined problems? Number two, systematically synthesize solutions and alternative solutions or approaches to the problem by analyzing designs against the requirements including cost of impact on the outside parameters or requirements, including cost and impacts on outside parameters or outside requirements for that matter. Right, outcome number three, comprehend and apply the knowledge that you gain through your qualification and your IPD, Initial Professional Development. Here we also have three criteria. Criteria number one, has the applicant applied engineering principles, practices, technologies, including the application of obviously your qualification and the theory in the practice area. Number two, indicated work knowledge of areas of practice that interact with the practice areas to underpin teamwork. So teamwork features highly here. And number three, applied related knowledge of finance, statutory, safety, and management. For outcome number four, manage part of all of one or more broadly defined engineering activities. Here we also have three criteria. Number one, how did you manage yourself? How did you manage people? How did you manage your work priorities? The processes and resources in broadly defined engineering work. Number two, role in planning, organizing, leading, and controlling broadly defined engineering activities. Is that evident? Three, knowledge of conditions and operations of contracts, 
and the ability to establish and maintain professional and business relationships and obviously is that evident. Number five, communication. Communicate um, clearly with others in the course of his or her broadly defined engineering activities. Now also remember outcome number five, will, you will be evaluated during your interview and that's where the interviewer is going to look at how you do your presentation, how you communicate. Is it effectively? Is it done uh, appropriately? Is the um, media and tools that you've used to get the message across. So number five, you will be evaluated uh, during your interview process. There's also criteria here, so let's have a look at them. Number one, the ability to write clear, concise, effective, technical, legal and editorial correct reports. And can you show that? Number two, the ability to issue clear instructions to stakeholders using appropriate language and communication skills and is this evident? Number three, oral presentations made by using structure, style, language, visual aids and supporting documents appropriate to the audience and the purpose. Then we get to outcome number six, which is recognize the foreseeable social, cultural and environmental effects of broadly defined engineering activities. So your criteria here, we only have two. Has the applicant the ability to identify interested and affected parties and the expectations in regard to interactions between the technical, social, cultural and environmental considerations. And is that shown? Number two, did the candidate demonstrate measures taken to mitigate the negative effects of engineering activities. And you need to document that well. Outcome number seven, meet all the legal and regulatory requirements and then protect the health and safety of persons in the course of your engineering activities. We also only got two criteria here. Number one, the applicant should demonstrate that they have identified all applicable legal and regulatory requirements, including health and safety requirements for the engineering activity. Number two, applicants should state the circumstances where they assisted in or demonstrated awareness of the selection of safe and sustainable materials, components and systems and have identified risk and applied risk management strategies. Then we get to outcome number eight, the one where people fall short more often than not in their applications, in my experience. Um, that is conduct engineering activities ethically. Here we also have two criteria. The first one, does the candidate understand, know and operate in compliance with excess rules of conduct as confirmed by registered persons? And number two, how ethical problems and affected parties were identified and the best solution to resolve the problem was selected by you, the candidate. So those are the two there. Please bring it into your engineering report. It seems like there's a lack of it in applications. Then we get to outcome number nine, which is the important one. Outcome number nine, we have two criteria in this section exercise sound judgment in the course of broadly defined engineering activities. Two criteria. The outcome can be displayed by the following performance. Number one, judgment exercised in arriving at a conclusion within the application of technologies and the interpretation to other disciplines and technologies. Number two, factors taken into consideration given Bearing in mind the risk, consequences in technology application and effective parties. Then we get to outcome number 10. Be responsible for making decisions on part or all of or one or more of your broadly defined engineering problems or activities. The criteria here, responsibility is displayed by the following performance. Engineering, social, environmental and sustainable development taking into consideration in discharging responsibilities for significant parts of one or more activities. 
Number two, advice sought from responsible authority on matters outside your area of competence. It's where the mentor plays a role. And number three, academic knowledge, at least at your entry level qualification. They still refer to the BTEC here, but we know that that's now um, being discontinued. Also combined with past experience used in formulating decisions. So that's where your IPD also plays a big role. Which brings me to outcome number 11. Undertake independent learning activities sufficient to maintain and extend competence. Number one, strategy independently adopted to enhance professional development. And if that is evident, that should reflect on your IPD form. So you should do IPD. We all know that. And then number two, awareness of philosophy of the employer in regard to professional development. And is that evident? So good luck with your applications. As I said, I've got the document available. Please email me and I'll send it to you. Um, also, bear in mind that we review applications before you submit it to EXA. We've all seen that only about 54% of the applications are successful. So give yourself a fair chance. That's why I've created this channel and that's why we're doing what we're doing to help you to get to that point um, without any failure. So please shout if you need any help and good luck with the applications this year.